Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I hope to mesh together two GWN 7062E Wi-Fi routers. I understand the process is very simple. Now I already have one right here. As you can see it here, I configured this router in a previous video and I'll put a link to that video up above as well as down below in the video description. Now, I asked graciously to Grandstream to send me a second 7062E so I could do this meshing video, and they were kind enough to do so, and it's right here in this box. I do want to take a quick moment out of the video just to mention that I will be giving one of these two units away in an upcoming live stream, so stay tuned to the channel for more information. Okay, now, back to the video. I have not opened it yet. We're going to attempt to do this live. The only thing that I have done thus far is I've gone through the documentation just to familiarize myself with the process and you can see it here and I'll put a link to this document down in the video description as well. So it talks about the mesh networking feature on the 7062E and obviously with mesh networking users can extend Wi-Fi coverage, optimize signal strength and stability, avoid the need for additional Ethernet cables, Enjoy a self-healing network where traffic automatically reroutes in the case of link failure. So to get started, if I just scroll through here, let's just go through these instructions briefly. So it says navigate to the advanced mesh menu, which I'll show you that in the actual user interface. And we're going to add the new router. We're going to click on adding a new router and then preparing the router for mesh connection. So it says here a couple things you have to do you, before beginning the mesh pairing, you gotta make sure that these following steps are in place. So the main router must have a WAN or uplink cable connected and must be provisioned. That we have already and that's this guy right here. So it's already provisioned, the light is blue and it does have a WAN connection. So we've accomplished that. The sub router must be factory reset. So that's right here in the box. I'm assuming it's been, you know, it's factory reset because it's never been configured. It's still in the box. If we have to reset it, we will. But it says once reset, the LED should be, should blink yellow. While it's blinking yellow, we're going to double press the sync button. So there's a sync button on the back of these units. And we're going to double press the sync button and it says after about a minute the LED should turn solid pink which means the device is in mesh pairing mode. And then it says you can now proceed using the wired or the wireless range. So what that means is you got two options when pairing the two routers together. You can connect an ethernet cable from the sub router to the main router to one of the LAN ports or you can do it wirelessly as long as the second router is in what, within one meter of the first router. So since they're both going to be right here on my desk, I'm going to attempt the wireless meshing or the wireless setup of the meshing, even though the instructions do say that the wired connection method is the recommended method. So let's go back to the instructions for a second. And as I scroll down, it just gives you the diagrams. Again, it's reviewing, must be connected to a WAN uplink cable, must be provisioned, and the LED should be solid blue. So our main router is ready to go. The sub router, again, must be either oh, brand new or manually reset. So we should be good to go since it is brand new. Like I, get, like I said, if we have to do the manual reset, we will. While blinking yellow, double click the sync button. After a minute, it should turn solid pink, meaning it's ready for meshing. And then what we can do is start the process. So it says, once you click start adding, the main router will scan for sub routers to be paired. If no devices are found, ensure the following. And then it goes over the uh, criteria, the prerequisites. And then it says here, the router should show up and then you select the router and then say add. And then the note here in blue says, if you're using a wired connection, no further action is needed. The pairing will complete automatically. But if using the wireless connection, which is what we're going to attempt today, it says press and hold the sync button on the sub router for three seconds to finalize the pairing. So that's what we're gonna do. So just real quick to reiterate, we have the main router set up, ready to go. We're gonna take the secondary router out of the box, plug it in, let it boot up, and then we're going to go ahead and press 
the double press the sync button on this router we're going to make sure they're within reach of each other because we're doing it wirelessly and then it should turn from blinking yellow to solid pink and then once we go through the add process and the router hopefully shows up and we add it then what we're going to do is just press and hold the sync button again on the secondary router uh, to complete the pairing process so that said Let's go ahead and let's begin with the actual setup. So I'm going to switch now to the top down camera so you can see me taking the new one out of the box. And again, we went through the unboxing last time. You get your quick setup guide. Here is the secondary router. And here is the power supply. That's pretty much all that comes in the box. There is an Ethernet cable. Underneath here, I'll show you that. Okay, they make it a little bit, there we go, adult proof. <laughs> and there's the Ethernet, the supplied Ethernet cable. So we'll put that over here for now. And again, you get the extra sticker containing the serial number, MAC address, and the device password. All right, so we have it out of the box. Let's go ahead, let's get this plugged in. I'm just gonna grab an extension cord, I'll be right back. Okay, let's switch to the side view now. All right, so you can see here, try to get it a little closer for you. In fact, let me zoom in just a bit. Okay, I'm limited by the power cord, so I think that's the best I'm gonna do as far as getting it zoomed in. So we here we have the main router, which is blue, and I don't know if you could see that in the video, and this one is green, but I'm hoping it's going to eventually switch. Now it's pink. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to flip it around. I'll hold it upside down real quick so you can see it. So there's your Ethernet ports, and then there's the sync button so what i'm going to do now is double press this and we should get from a blinking pink light we should get hopefully a blinking yellow light so i'm going to go ahead and double press okay so now the light went from blinking pink to blinking yellow so what I'm going to do now, let's switch over to the computer screen. And we're going to come over to the 7062. Now I'm going to log into the main router. Okay, so what we can do, there's two ways to add the secondary router. We can come up here where it says add a new router. That's the shortcut or we can come over to the advanced menu on the left side and if we come down to Wi-Fi settings and mesh we can add a router here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click add router and then it just reviews the preparations again so let's go ahead and say next and it's searching now I noticed that the Blinking yellow light turned to blinking pink, but it did find the router. So let's go ahead and click it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and say, select the node to be added. So there it is right there. We're going to go ahead and say add. Press and hold the sync button for three seconds on the router to complete. So we're going to go ahead and switch to my side view. 
it's doing a fast pink on both routers. So I'm going to just on the back on the sub router, which is this one here, I'm going to press and hold like it says for three seconds and release. Okay, now let me switch back to the desktop and there was just a message on the screen here that said that the router has been added successfully. Okay, so it took about a minute like the instructions said. Now if I go to the side view, we have again solid blue on the main router and currently right now we have a blinking blue on the secondary router and if we go to the desktop you can see here that we have a status of connected. And now if I switch back to the side view, you could see here that both routers have a solid blue connection. So there you go. It really was as simple as the documentation said. As long as the main router met the prerequisites, which was basically being provisioned and having a WAN connection, and the secondary router was either brand new or factory reset. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. This, I think, is a great meshing solution for a residential situation when you think about the price point. In fact, let's go over to VoIPsupply.com and you can see the regular price for the GWN 7062E is around $49, but they have it marked down to $46.55. So if you take two of those together, you're under $100, or if you even put a third node in place, you're under $150 for a complete residential home meshing system. And I think about years past when I bought other brands of meshing systems, I paid several hundred dollars, close to four and five hundred dollars. So I think this is a great solution. And that's about it for now. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care for now.